Richard, even in the good times, everyone said that banks should specialise. Universal banks do too many businesses, too many activities, too many products. If you're outside the top three, you were nowhere, you had to specialise. Now you've got regulators and governments wanting banks to split up. And from what we've seen in the first quarter, we know this year is going to be really, really tough for a whole bunch of especially investment banking rated products. You argue in your note today that all these things together mean that it's more crucial than ever for banks to start concentrating on what they're good at, right? Absolutely. There are, there are not only the regulatory issue, there's also just the sheer markets. And when clients are staying on the sidelines, even the most amazing flow monster business that just sits on client flows and processes them at a very economical rate is going to suffer. So rates are coming, you, you're finding that whether it's in equities or fixed income currencies and commodities, everything is down. And don't forget the first quarter is a bit of a hooray um, first, first period when everyone sets rates for the whole year. So now is the time to start focusing and really thinking in depth what are your ultimate strengths? And so give our readers some examples. Run, well, run down some yeah, of these European let's, let's banks and what they should be on, in. Yeah, sure. I mean, let, let's have a think. Let's, we're talking about European mm -hmm. investment banks mm -hmm. today. So the European banks with investment banking arms, or, or um, and we're not talking about the US, but we're comparing with the US, because say uh, JP Morgan has a good benchmark. Across the waterfront, it has a great range of activities. Critically, it has scale in all of those activities. Now, in, in Europe, you've probably got Deutsche and Barclays are probably your best sure. two contenders um, in a full service sense, although Barclays is still growing. Um, that was Bob Diamond's great emphasis. He was always building out the Bar Barclays capital. Then you've got another, another two in Switzerland, UBS and Credit Suisse, that spend their whole time growing, but they, they get into the top league and then they drop out again. So question mark there, and don't forget, they've got the Swiss regulator breathing down their neck and they've got capital concerns. I'm not saying they need capital urgently, but you know they're going to have to watch how they use their capital. Then there's the next division down, if you like, which is people like BNP Paribas, Societe Generale. BNP Paribas, first class in DCM, debt capital markets and FIC. Um, SOCGEN, particularly good in equity, equity derivatives. And then you've got a couple of Brits. You've got HSBC, which is good in, in its global banking and market section in, in FIC, FIC. And then you've got um, RBS, which is to me the first bank that's really breathed, breathed in deep and said, we can't be all things to all people. We're just going to play to our strengths. And what we do best is debt capital markets. And my final question would be, how brutal do you? Do you exit very, very quickly? Do you manage down? What's the right way for a bank to do it? Banks are hopeless at cutting costs, and particularly at cutting headcount. They, they, they just they cannot cut salaries, so they have to cut headcount. They can't do it quickly enough. They do actually just need to withdraw, and that is where RBS did it. They just said, equities, finito. Well, it sounds like they've got a big job ahead of them. They haven't proven to be able to do this before, but it sounds like they're going to have to do it now. So thank you, Richard.